I was looking at whether it's a young talking to a young person who's starting law school, and the first thing I look at is where they're going to go to law school, because uh, a lot of what what are considered prestigious law schools are consider themselves prestigious because they're hanging on to the old system, they're hanging on to to uh, litigation. They 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 want to be number two in their in the room, so they have all the all the stuff from the old way of doing it, and they resist doing alternative dispute resolution. Newer law schools and other ones are getting very much open to working with. They do the litigation thing, but they do other, they give people an option. And um, so um, I think that's the most important thing I'd do is, is make sure that they've got, they've got choices uh, so they can, they can see what, what, when they get out, by the time they get out of law school, they can see what they'd like to do. And I talked to some lawyer just out of law school, and they are anxious to do court work. They want to do trial work, and that's great. You know. um, but that, but sometimes because that's what's been drilled into them. I did a training in Atlanta, working with Nora and Bushfield and some of the others down there. And at the training, uh, one of the professors from the law school, the clinical professor. Uh, or the moot court kind of person was there with six of his students. And as a result of uh, them sitting in at the collaborative law, they, the students said, we don't want to do a litigation case. We want to do a collaborative case. So it, they ended up doing one of each. But the lawyer sort of, set, the professor sort of set himself up by taking him to that course because he he kind of got his own program blown out of the water there a little bit, but it shows that people want to have, they want to have a, a broad experience and try it out. We came very close here with one of our law schools of being able to get their clinical program to be, the students, the law students would be the collaborative lawyers. The college had a psychology department, so they could be the coaches, and they had the economics department, so someone there could be the financial person, and they had something to do with the children. So we could you could set up the whole team on a clinical basis, and the person at the law school who was very much instrumental in having that happen got moved, and the people that wanted didn't have the commitment to doing it, and so it just ended up doing immigration law instead of family law, something like that. So, but it, the, po the potential there for having a, a clinical program in some college that were, where the whole team approach could, could be so exciting for those students to um, learn how to work with a team around a, a knotty problem. I don't have the foggiest idea of what's going to happen uh, in the future, and I don't spend any time thinking about it. Um, I think my concern is that the orthodoxy doesn't get laid in and that uh, they continue to get the creativity that comes from a group, you know, that focused group. You think wonderful things are going to happen and things you can't predict uh, are going to happen. But that's great. But you can, but uh, you hate to channel them and make sure that it's going to happen in a certain way. IACP is uh, um, the International Academy of Collaborative Professionals. Uh, it started as the American Academy of Collaborative Professionals, and uh, that was before Canada got involved. So when Canada got involved, they had to change the name, which is great. But I went to the very first IACP, or AACP meeting in uh, a little suburb of San Francisco, I think there were 50 people there. And uh, um, now, after nine years or something, it's pretty, I think they've got a couple thousand members, maybe six or seven hundred show up for a conference, and uh, a lot of good things are happening, and they're, they're, I think they're keeping the focus for the most part. And one of the things I like to see is they maintain the 
as much as possible a bottom-up aspect where they're listening to what has to happen, that they're there to help them not lay down rules for what should happen with the people. So that would be the one thing to be that I would guard, want to guard against if I was involved, which I'm not very involved with that. I'm on their advisory board, but um, we don't advise very much. I alluded to this earlier, but one of the things that I really want to emphasize is we call it the paradigm shift, but the shift that the lawyer has to make, actually every professional has to make, is something that is, is a continual thing. It's not just, it doesn't happen just once. You have, it can, can, we're, we're trained in our professions to be a certain way that is the old way. And now we're taking on a new way. We've got to let go of the old ways. And some of them are deeply ingrained. So we have to keep the focus on letting go, letting go, letting go. And the ego is a big part of that. The ego is a big part of that. Um, one thing I should also maybe throw in is the idea of the aspect of, well, well, it shouldn't be overplayed because a lot of people don't like it. There's a spiritual aspect to what we do because we're bringing our, soul, we're bringing our deeper selves to this practice. And we're asking our clients and other people to rise, to rise up to their deeper, to get into their deeper selves. So uh, things we can do to keep people focused on the importance of, of uh, spiritual aspects. Um, article uh, Appendix I of my book, of our book, has a, has a little a summary of a spiritual approach that I talk about some and that has been meaningful to me through the years. And uh, uh, there are things that uh, I think about that we haven't done. What if we, as he sat down to a four-way conference, we held hands? What if we just closed our eyes and got centered. Um, something that reminds people of, because they come in all reared up in their heads and things that remind them to center, get centered, centered in. And the lawyers can help do that, the other professionals. Part of our job is to keep the space as clean as possible. But uh, things like that might happen through the line where we become it becomes more of a more of a spiritual space that people come to. Um, I had a case where the guy was uh, he had, they hadn't seen each other for several years and and he came in and before we meeting and was just doing a jab every time anything negative a negative jab anything so my client had been sort of trained I we sort of trained about this before and so nobody was reacting he kept doing it and nobody was reacting and it wasn't it wasn't set up that nobody reacted just nobody reacted so at the first break I was there, sitting in there still with my client he came in and said I want to apologize for my behavior he said I can see that it wasn't appropriate and so it's sort of like that. That it's, it's, it's uh, not an appropriate place for that kind of, and we need to honor that more and create it more.